Hey there, everybody. We are live with the Philadelphia Stage Combat Workshop stream. Uh, tonight, we are talking about the class schedule for this year. So normally, in previous years, uh, we have not been able to premiere the class schedule until closer to the workshop itself. Um, for a lot of years, it was you found out what classes were when on the weekend itself. Last couple of years, we've been trying to make it so that you can sign up a little bit earlier ahead of time. This year, because we're virtual, we have to get things started as soon as we can. So starting this weekend, by the end of the day on Sunday, class signups will be live for anyone who registers. Let me just check something real quick. Cool. All right. Um, so yeah, we wanted to make sure that you got a day or two to look through the schedule to see, hey, is there a class at a certain time that actually works for me? So tonight we are going to be talking a bit about the schedule. Um, for anybody, if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to throw them in the comments. We can answer any question live. Um, if you have, if you're joining us, throw a hi, throw a hello in the comment section. Let us know you're here. Um, we can we can put comments live on the screen uh, if something in particular catches our eye. And for anybody who can to get us all hype hyped up for uh, for this year's workshop, let's get this started. Let's get it started, people. All right. So, anyways, enough of that absurdity. So, we are going to get the class schedule started. So, let me get that. Um. Oh, come on. There we go. Cool. Technology is a fun thing. All right. So, share screen. Share my screen. Oh, come on. I didn't. Uh, there we go. Come on. Technology, be my friend. All right. So a couple of important things to remember about the workshop this year. Classes will be from 1030 in the morning till 5 p.m. And this is all of these times are Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we will have a group warm up starting at 10 a.m. going until about 10:15. That's going to be for warm up and morning announcements. Uh, classes will be from 10:30 to 5 p.m. Lunch we will take a lunch break at 1:15 for about 45 minutes. 1:15 to 2 p.m. Uh, we are hoping to have vendor spotlights both lunches, both days. So that is going to involve a couple of Zoom rooms, Zoom links that you can jump in, ask questions of the vendors live, get information about how to order from them. We're hoping to get a couple more people, but at least to start, we know we have Rogue Steel, Neil Massey and all of them out there. And we also have Jesse Belsky. So make sure you got, you got some time for that. Um, we will have a uh, Q&A webinar uh, after classes are done on the Sunday from 5 to 6 p.m. That's going to involve all of the instructors. And there will be, uh, just as a point of reference, all of the times listed on this schedule are listed as Eastern Standard Time. We are going to work on getting a reference point of reference on our website that talks about the time zone conversions for all of these classes because we want to make these classes as available to everyone kind of no matter where you're at. Um, so any of the classes that you see tonight, they are going to include a equipment list. Normally at a workshop, we would be the ones providing the weaponry and equipment for you. In a virtual setting, unfortunately, we are kind of restricted to whatever we got at home. So at home, um, in the class list, there's a list of things that you can either purchase or you can find some equivalent 
of. So if it's asking for a single sword, as long as you have a wooden dowel or a broomstick or something to simulate something of roughly that kind of length, or at least something to hold in your hand. It could be a wooden spoon. That works, okay, for, for most classes. If there's a class that specifically needs um, something in particular, we will make sure that you know about it so that you have time to purchase it. We're also going to be trying to make sure that uh, different vendors have their information on our website early enough so that you've got a little bit of lead time to order equipment for yourself if you would like. So uh, for any of the classes that are movement based, any that, any that are lecture or discussion based, it's gonna list it on the, um, it'll list it in the description that it's a discussion based kind of thing. Hello, Becca, I just see you there. Um, but yeah, any of the classes that are movement based, that are up on your feet and moving, you're gonna need to be wearing some sort of comfort, comfy clothes, things, think workout clothes, that kind of thing. Um, and you're gonna need some sort of relatively open space. Whatever you have available is fine. There are gonna be some classes that are staff or stick based, something that you might need something a little bit longer or, or wider space. Um, but, all I ask is that you just participate as much as you can, depending on the space that you have. Cool. So enough of me yammering about that. <laughs> so coming back to moving into the classes themselves. Period one on the first day, 10.30 to 11.45 a.m. We've got reactions to reactions and how to play body pain from uh, Kev McCurdy. He's our instructor from Great Britain. Uh, where does a reaction truly start from? How does the body move with a hit? How can a performer replicate that for stage or TV or film? He's gonna take you through his method by using, I believe he has that method the, the acronym there, he's, we have it listed in one of his other classes uh, further down, uh, system to break down movement, to desensitize the body and explain that flinch principle to make it look awesome when you get hit. The next class in period one is from uh, one of our local instructors, Oliver Donahue, uh, broadsword into longsword. Uh, he's going to take us through uh, examining how the standard SAFD broadsword techniques can be adapted into a more martially, historically bent kind of idea uh, while remaining safe, dynamic, and theatrical. Uh, the equipment for that class is should be, if you have a longsword, awesome. If you don't, finding a stick or having something in your hand that is roughly about 30 to 38 inches in length. It could be a cane. It can be a wooden dowel from the store, whatever you can get your hands on, something of that length to be able to move two-handed. Uh, the next class, the last class in period one is actually from one of our uh, other visiting instructors, Michelle Zhang. Uh, called Jingju Introduction and Basic Training. Gets you the basic idea of uh, Jingju, the Beijing uh, opera. Following a brief overview of Jingju from a Western perspective, we'll go over basic training exercises that focus predominantly on footwork. Areas they hope to touch on, depending on time, is kicks, spins, and stances. So let me just double check something real quick. Awesome. All right, let me stop sharing my screen real quick. And actually, before I get on to the next period, it looks like we've got Damon Stith, our special guest. Let me add him onto the screen. Hello, Damon. How you doing? I'm well. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Can't complain up here. Yeah, How's it yeah. going in uh, Texas? How, how are you guys holding up with the hurricane coming in? Uh, we, we're, I'm in Austin, so we're a little, um, we're in central Texas. And so we're not getting the, we're not really affected in the same way. We'll probably get a little bit of rain or something, but not like the, um, severe, severe, uh, storms that's going on on the coast. 
Cool. All right. So instead of me kind of going through the, the schedule in order, why don't we, since you're here, why don't we focus specifically on the classes that you'll be bringing to our workshop, which by the way, I cannot wait to see what, what the classes are. Uh, no pressure. Um, no, pressure. <laughs> no pressure, exactly. So let me get back into sharing my screen again, if technology would be my friend tonight. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that seems like to be the common mantra is if technology is going to favor me today. <laughs> Especially in the world of COVID. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All righty. So get back into this schedule. So let me check out where else do we got you? Okay, so day one, uh, first class for you is actually period three, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central. So let me get that a bit larger. Oh, Thank sorry. you. There we go. Stinking thing, come on. Slideshow. From current slide, there we go. If I can, anyways. So yeah, Damon, why don't you talk to us about uh, long stick? Okay, so um, what I when I originally uh, pitched this idea is I wanted to uh, demonstrate the commonality and the differences between the different long stick traditions you find um, in Africa from mm -hmm. from north to south to east to west. So uh, we were going to do like an overview. Of, of different long long stick traditions, uh, be that from whether it's Wasan Sanda from Hausa, uh, Wakaf from Algeria, Adonga from Ethiopia, and even like Sirkama, which is a form of, uh, which is a, they have a, a form of long stick practice in, in ten, uh, Tanzania. Um, I wanted to, to show, we were gonna go through these things and then um, use this information from the class to kind of help uh, do uh, very interesting uh, style of Egyptian stick fighting, which is there's no name for it that we know of right now, but it's a game they used to play on the river. Um, and it's referred to by scholars as uh, uh, water jousting. And uh, water jousting is is pretty much uh, using long stick like you would use it, use a spear. And the way that the, the fight goes is that you have teams that are on uh, these, these uh, small rafts and what they do is they, the object of the game is to to dislodge using your using your stick, knock the person off of the boat uh, using these uh, the the pole um, the punting poles that they would use to propel the sh the, the boats. Uh, so this was a form of a form of training, and it was also a form of like you know the way the fishermen would fight. Um, you know, there's questions of whether or not this was like a a serious fight or if it was like something more for fun. It was probably kind of you know, in between the two, um, the the great thing about it is like well, a lot of the scenes you see just how dangerous the activity was because you know always in the in the foreground there's like a a crocodile or a hippopotamus kind of like drawn there to show you like hey this is what's in the water waiting for you but oh, um, yeah 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 so I wanted to we're gonna we're gonna uh, get just kind of touch on this this different long stick traditions from across the continent and then how those systems how those living traditions help us. In reconstructing like a lost art form, like like um, water jousting. Very cool. All right. So let's shift on to the next class that we've got you doing. Uh, I believe we're shifting into day two. Where'd you go? There we go. All right. So period three, day two. Okay. Um, yeah, so this this is going to be a, a a groundbreaking class for me, and I've okay. never taught this class before ever. So this is going to be like a an exclusive, guys. So um, I primarily like when I go and do workshops, especially when we're dealing with North African stick and sword. Um, I typically uh, draw from the tradition of mathrag, which is a form of stick fighting that's practiced in Algeria. Now, mathrag just means stick. And the stick was used as a way to train for the sword. So we kind of use that as a, as a platform to kind of build from there. Okay. But um, mathrag as a practice in Algeria has different modalities. So you can play mathrag with one stick. You can play mathrag with a larger stick that you'd have to use with two hands, which is wakaf, which we're going to be covering some of that um, the day before. Mm 
And then um, there, you can also play um, you can play Mathrag with two sticks with and simulating two swords. So that's the Zuj Mathrag. So Mathrag with two sticks. Um, and again, this is going to be my first time teaching this uh, this aspect of Mathrag to anyone. So um, all you really need for that is going to be a um, two uh, two sticks or uh, two swords, uh, and the sticks should be roughly, ideally, sword length. Traditionally, they use a stick that's a little larger than a sword. They'll use a stick that's around like uh, four feet uh, long. Okay. But since we're since we're and if you have that, that's perfectly fine. But since we're we're ultimately translating this into the sword. I tend to use more sword link sticks. So 36 inches is a good, is a good, um, is a good place. And if it's a little shorter, we'll make it work with whatever you have. Okay. Um, and yeah. I can, right now, I know I put on there two sticks, roughly 25 to 38 inches in length. I can adjust that before it goes up on the website. No, that's as cool. Well, that's as well, cool. I wanted to just double check for the, uh, the skill level that you probably recommend for this kind of class. Would you say it's, it's, something that any skill level is is comfortable being in or would you probably recommend for somebody who has had at least a basic understanding or a basic introduction to sword work no i don't think that you need to it, it's the way we're going to approach it like the way that i i build the classes it starts with a very a very simple fundamental uh, foundation and i build from there and all my my Anything that's advanced and complex is more uh, different uh, different permutations of simple things. It's kind of the way I approach it. So yeah, it should be it should be just fine for anybody, um, regardless of skill level. Cool. So before this schedule goes up on the website, everybody, just letting y'all know that a lot of Demon's classes, the skill level listed is going to become open. Um, just to clarify for everybody. Beginner pretty much is somebody uh, we consider somebody like this is something you've you've never picked up a sword before you've never thrown a stage punch before you're completely new to this and we want to make sure everyone knows that no matter your skill level we have something here for you um, intermediate maybe you've got a couple of years under your belt a couple of different weapon disciplines under your belt advanced you've probably been doing this for quite a while and you're looking to add another skill here or there. Wherever you see open, that means anybody from any skill level is welcome to come into this class. You're welcome into pretty much any class, but open is probably gonna be a bit more comfortable no matter what your skill level is. So uh, last but not least, let's jump to the last class that we have you teaching, uh, uh, your sword and buckler class. So can you tell us a bit about that? Okay, this is going to be another, this is like, <laughs> this is actually going to be another exclusive, you know, premier class that I've never, never shared with anyone else. Uh, so um, my organization, uh, HAMA, uh, Historical African Martial Arts Association, uh, we've been in the process of translating um, a Mamluk treatise um, um, into English from classical Arabic. And um, in this treatise, uh, there is a one of the the training drills, which is actually, which is actually a cutting drill, uh, which is referred to as threading the needle. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to explore um, we're going to explore uh, swordplay in the Mamluk tradition, mm -hmm. uh, using and kind of deconstructing that attack pattern um, of threading the needle. So um, again, this is going to be a, a a different, a different than normal class than I know than one that I normally teach. So, and what you need is a stick and a, a stick or a sword and a buckler or a small shield okay. or a, or flip flop or a sandal. <laughs> you can make it work. We can make it work. That that is kind of the the theme to in the time of COVID. We can make it work. Yeah. Exactly. So while I've got you here, let me, let me get out of screen sharing real quick. Come mm -hmm. back to this screen. So while you, while we got you here real quick, um, let's chat about let's chat about you and kind of where you've been, what your training's been, um, what exactly is your association with Hama with Historical African Martial Arts? Well, I'm the the founder and the president. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, that has been, uh, yeah, that's my, that's, that has been my, my thing for, for, uh, for, for a while, um, was doing this stuff by myself at first. And then, um, uh, um, was seeing what was going on with HEMA. And I was like, always thinking, wow, it would be really, really nice to kind of have something like that, um, for, um, for African based martial arts and, um, you know, started walking that path and uh, met a, a bunch of really cool people along the way that wanted to kind of help bring this into um, and make it into a reality. So we started a, a, a formal organization and um, yeah, you know, we're still still a baby as far as this stuff goes, but yeah. um, things are looking really, really good for us, you know. Yeah. And I hope it continues to grow because this is this is freaking awesome. I. In, in my own training, I didn't really know much about even historical European martial arts until I started getting into stage combat. Mm -hmm. And my brain is just, over, especially over the last bunch of years, um, I've got another friend who uh, is trying to learn a bit more Persian martial arts um, mm -hmm. and just getting exposure to so many different cultures, so many different ideas. It's, I'm loving it. And yeah. seeing a lot more uh, theatrical productions pulling a lot of these skills and a lot of these uh, historical references and backgrounds, it's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I think that as we progress as a society, or at least I hope that we get, we get smarter in a certain way. And mm -hmm. like, so our, our eye, we, we train our eye to see certain things. And so like, for example, as a kid, I love, love Excalibur. Like, love it. It was like my, 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 my Bible as a kid. Love Exc the movie Excalibur. Right. You know, and um, I'm shaking my knuckles, my fist at these HEMA guys, right? Uh -huh. You know, these HEMA guys, because now it's like, I can't really enjoy the movie because I'm like, oh man, the armor isn't correct. And the way they're fighting is like ridiculous. And, you know, so, yep. um, for the time, it served its purpose. But as we as we as we gain more access to information, um, you know, we we our eye becomes more cultured and educated, and therefore we need to look to we need to look to um, to elevating our 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 craft in that way. And you know, it's kind of like yeah, we're, it's, it's like at one and sometimes there are of course things that you just want to just go and just go on a journey and it, it doesn't matter. You're just going on a journey. Right. But I think it adds a lot of, um, I think it adds to the depth of the, uh, of the performer and the practitioner to be able to have those skill sets and to be able to artfully interpret them in a way that they apply on stage and on screen. And that's like a whole nother level of that. So. Yeah. Like we actually, um, on Wednesday, I got a chance to chat with um, one of our uh, teachers from last year, Dan Granke. And uh, one of the one of the things that Dan's been really focusing on is a lot of long sword and historical, a lot, a lot of HEMA uh, inclusion into what his choreography has been. And uh, I tried to ask him kind of what, why is it important for actor combatants to get familiar with historical technique? And he said it really kind of concisely, like, because it gives you the why. It gives you the, like, well, why like why am I cutting to this shoulder? Oh, because that target's open and this. And it's like, so yeah. give you a point of reference as an actor to play off of. Yeah, and, and anything that helps you, helps you um, uh, embody or enter into that role, um, it, it is one less thing that you, it makes your job a lot easier, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's always, 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 and I think it's a really, we've gotten to a good point where, and so again, the HEMA people, man, I'm shaking my fist at you guys. Um, gosh, I can't even watch stuff like Game of Thrones. I'm like, man, it's like the fights. It's like, oh, man, why are they using it like that? And I'm not even a longsword guy. I don't know, but just kind of hearing some of the, you know, t taking up some of the, the ambient um, um information from people that fight with long sword or fight with sword and shield and fight in armor. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you, you, you start seeing like, Oh yeah, that's, it is kind of goofy as to why, why they're trying to cut through the, 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 the plate in that way. But yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyways, <laughs> what, just out of curiosity, what is some sort of uh show or reference 
that has has happened in, in the last however many years that you've seen. Is there something that uh, you wish they had done better research on as far as far as historical African martial arts? Oh gosh, you're going to open up a can of worms here. I'm sure. Um, you can tell me there's too many to count. Well, I mean, the, the, sad, the, the sad thing is, is that there are too many to count and then there are very little to count. So then okay. you, oh, yeah. you, kind of, you kind of find yourself in a situation where um, you're kind of happy that it was done, but wishing it was done in a way that was like, you know, that was like that grabbed you. Um, so for the most part, like, um, I haven't really seen any, any, like, I mean, one, there's rare, there's rarely any films that kind of depict that, that period of time for, you know, for Africa. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you do find it, cause there are some movies and then you just got to kind of like give them a thumbs up and appreciate that they're doing that they're doing at least trying to tackle that period. So like right. you'll see some films like um, some some foreign films where they'll deal with like historical matter, a historical African context. But right. like, again, like the the fight choreography is 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 terrible. Um, the acting is not always great, but it's like, you know, you see it. It's like, OK, this is this is something that's happening. Right. Uh, but then again, you know, take, for example, Black Panther. You have a lot of money. You have a lot of resources. You have a lot of talent at your disposal. Mm -hmm. um, and you have all these things, but, you know, there's not much that's done as far as bringing like more historic, historical or traditional authentic African fighting arts into the character of Black Panther. Now, of course, they were fighting with like African based weapons, mm -hmm. uh, but it would have been nice to see more, uh, a little bit more of a focus or development of that, you know, that could have been a, a really good thing to see. Um, but usually, yeah, we don't get too many, it is not too many things that I see that it's like, okay, good. They, I'm glad that they showed that. Um, it's either, it's, it's, it, the, the feat is that they're actually doing the, doing the film itself as opposed to some of the action. Shaka Zulu is another example of that. Like in the, what, 70s, 80s, there was a mini series on Shaka Zulu. Um, which, you know, rest in peace, Henry Sele, who played uh, Shaka, um, was great for his time. But man, it's like, I just wish like, I could go back. It's like, okay, let me do the choreography and let's do it like this. Let's film it like this. And, you know, it would have, you know, could have easily revolutionized a lot of things. But, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we always think in, in the hindsight, but no, it, you're you're completely right, and thank you for for saying that. Thank you for for pointing out a lot of that. Um, yeah, it's it's easy for somebody somebody like me to to take kind of take that for granted. So thank you for saying that. Um, I also wanted to share a quick comment that we got on our Facebook stream. Uh -oh. uh, Becca's uh, specifically, this is to Demont. Thank you for bringing what you're bringing to Philly. Uh, we're really appreciated. Um, yeah, we're. God, can't we? Um, speaking of stuff that we're bringing to Philly, you also make weapons. I do. I do. I make uh, all types of training training weapons, and we've uh, we are actually making live blades as well. So, um, wait, if you hold on one second. Okay. Yeah. So for those, if you're just joining us, we're just hanging tight because Damon is grabbing a couple of weapons that he has made. Oh, here we go. And I'm back. All right. Oh. So I, um, secret, my secret is I love, I really love working with wood. Okay. Um, I love making uh, training swords and stuff out of wood. Oh, that is gorgeous. Yeah, this is an Ethiopian Chotel. Okay. And uh, it's a sickle sword from Ethiopia. And uh, this right here is uh, Ethiopian Gurari. It's a, it's a straight sword. 
Okay. This is made out of teak. I really love this guy here. Um, and this is a looks like a Quan Dao, but it's not a Quan Dao. Okay. Um, it's actually I based it off of a uh, a Turkana fighting stick. So, and then we have this guy here. This is. Um, I saw that picture. Yes, yeah, still Kopesh. <gasps> um, my my business partner is really proud of this because he made it. So he's all he's all. <laughs> Walking around with his chest puffed out and stuff, all, all happy about it. But yeah, yeah. So we also make them out of bronze. Um, we make uh, weapons out of um, uh, HDPE, which is a high density polyethylene plastic. You know, for for um, for training. And we do nylon, uh, wood, steel, aluminum, bronze where it's uh, where it's appropriate. And um, yeah. Very cool. Um, is there a way that fo if folks want to order something to be able to practice with or just yep. something to have, because those look freaking amazing. I might have to pick you up one of the, the wooden ones. Yeah. Um, is there a website or is there a way for people to order from you? Yeah. So if you go to our Facebook page, it's Street Forge Armory. Um, if you go there, we have a we have a for sale or catalog part uh, out in our album section. Um, and that has like probably a more diverse images plus a link to uh, our PayPal to to place an order. Um, you can also go to uh, my website, which is silentsword.org. And that it needs to be updated, but it has like a few examples of some things that we make as well. So if you go there, if you go to the Street Forge Armory page on that website, then it'll it'll take you to our online store there too. So those are two ways you can you can go and see what we have. Cool. So I actually just threw it up in the comment section real quick. Just a reminder for folks, Street Forge Armory or silentsword.org. Mm -hmm. Check out Damon's stuff. It is freaking amazing. And in fact, uh Becca just was like gonna jump on there right now. Thank you, Becca. There Thank you. Go. Thank you so much. You know, uh, real fast, it's funny because <laughs> uh, one of our actually one of our council members, the, the VP of our organization, mm -hmm. he's based in Philly. Um, cool. Yeah, his name is Damon Cunning. I shouldn't say his government name over on live. His name is Osa, Osa, Osa Zua in Kante. <laughs> okay. but, uh, yeah, yeah, he um, he's in Philly. Okay. And true, true story, um, a couple of years ago, we had our very first. Um, our first uh, gathering, mm -hmm. and there was this big, big, you know, contest between Philly and Austin. I think I heard about this. Yeah, keep yeah. going. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was this big, big, big contest. So we did like a poll to see, you know, get people to to do it, and you know, Austin won, which was appropriate because you know I couldn't let I couldn't let the gathering be, you know, anywhere else but my hometown. But. Um, the next time we are able to meet and we may actually do an online, an online um, gathering. Okay. Uh, yeah. But so our next spot, our next time that we're going to have our Hama gathering is going to be in Philly in person. The next time we can do it in person. So we'll nice. be that way. So look yeah. out for that. Yes. Look out for that. It'd be freaking awesome. Cool. So, uh, let's, if you're up for hanging out for a little while, I'm going to, I want to at least get back to finishing kind of going through some of the schedule. Um, but if you got to go, totally cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to step out. I, I appreciate being here and especially all the, the, uh, the love and kindness. I, I look forward to working with you guys soon. Thank you guys so much. And, um, yeah, I'm, I've been working on this, uh, video project that's really, uh, it's destroyed me for the past two weeks. I've been nothing but a hermit. And yeah. my mind is like, my mind is like uh, Swiss cheese right now to refer to quantum leap. So I'm gonna bow out right now. Uh, thank you guys for, again, for inviting me into your home and I look forward to working with you guys. Can't wait to see it. And on, I will send you some more questions about vendor yeah. stuff. Yes, cool. please. All right. Um, have a great night. All right, you too, take care. Bye. Bye-bye. 
So that was Damon Stith. Uh, so if you just joined our stream, uh, you can go back and check out all the things that Damon talked about. Damon actually got a chance to talk through the three classes that he's gonna be teaching with us here in Philly. And I'd like to go back real quick and go over some of the other classes. I started kind of going through in really kind of detail reading each of the class descriptions. I think I'm gonna go through a little bit more uh, quickly this time, so I'm not boring you guys. So, all right, let me come back to this. So, let, will it, let me go back, there we go. Oh, this is cool. All right, so we talked about the schedule, the first day, the first class, first day. Second class, first day, October 1st or October 31st, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kevin McCurdy is also gonna be teaching in the second period. Kev is in London, or he is in, he is in England, he's in Great Britain. Uh, so he's actually five hours ahead of us. So we're gonna make sure we get him in and out at the top of the day. Uh, so kick and punch combos. How do you sell a fight on stage or screen correctly? What works for the audience? The answer, reality. It's gonna be basically a class on how to get this fight looking messy and dirty. Gonna be playing with rhythms, also gonna be looking, uh, making the fight look real. Uh, the story becomes more accessible to the audience. He's gonna be choreographing fast, so you gotta stay on your game if you join that class. As far as equipment goes, you really only need open space and clothes to move in. Uh, next up in period two, Fight Direction 101 with Jacqueline Holloway. So this is an open class. This is open to anybody who would like to jump in. It is gonna be geared towards folks hoping to become fight choreographers or fight directors. So if you're curious about what it takes to be a fight director, this is gonna be a good class to jump in on. Uh, there may even be a, a guest teacher helping Jacqueline out. We're gonna get more details on that as we get closer. But this class is a lecture and discussion class. So you really only need to come with your attention, curiosity, and something to take notes with. Second period, last class, uh, second period uh, is Jingju Sword and Spear, specifically spear technique. This is going to kind of carry off of uh, the Jingju intro class that Michelle is teaching in the first period, but know that it's not required to take both at the same time, like taking one right after the other. It does help, but it's not required. At the very least, the class is open to anybody of any skill level. It does help to have some sort of staff experience. So uh, Michelle is going to be using the template of a choreographed fight. Uh, and this class will focus on basic Jinju spear techniques and stick handling. The areas they're gonna focus on are stances, spins, hits, and blocks. The equipment you're gonna need for this class is essentially a stick or spear roughly the same height as you. So it could be a staff, it can be a broomstick, it could be a, something as long as it's a nice long stick, that is gonna help. There's a couple of classes that all require some sort of stick of like four to six feet long. So highly recommend just, that might be something to invest in if you don't already have something like that at home. Uh, easy place to get something like that that I've personally found is a place like Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, most of the times you can find that kind of thing back in the lumber area, usually where they have like stair railings. You can get like a uh, one inch dowel, one inch wide dowel at about that kind of length. Um, you can also go to Michael's or Joann Fabrics and get something a little bit smaller, but it's at least something in your hands. So definitely check that out. So third period, first day. From uh, Loraldo Anzualda. Loraldo, if I say your name wrong again, I am so sorry. I keep doing that. Uh, wait, you can't do that. Can you? Exploring taboos in choreography. There's been pervasive theories of what performers shouldn't do with choreography. Participants will discuss, identify, troubleshoot, and problem solve different challenges in choreography that are all identified through exploration and discussion. 
Participants are going to be led through exercises, go through partner work via the breakout rooms in Zoom, and they'll have time at the end for any sort of questions or discussions. Uh, it's preferable in this class that you have some sort of bladed weapon, whether a knife or a sword, or at least something to represent that. So something to hold in your hand to represent either a sword or a knife. I do not recommend an actual sharp blade. Those are not allowed, just saying. Uh, Damon, earlier in our live stream, got a chance to go through uh, a lot of what his uh, long stick class is gonna be. So if you wanna hear about what that class description is, you can check out uh, earlier in the live stream. And then the other class during period three, first day, is Dumb Knife Tricks from our local Philly instructor, Eli Lin. Uh, from Arya Stark to the Winter Soldier, films are full of cool knife fights where people are flipping their weapons around from hand to hand like it's nothing. Is this a slick or highly effective way to fight? No, not at all. It's a terrible plan, but it does look super cool. Yes, yes it does. In this class, we'll explore several different ways to flip a knife around and how this kind of flair might fit into other kinds of knife combinations. So for this kind of class, similar to the uh, Exploring Taboos, you want something in your hand that's gonna uh, replicate a feel of something about that long for a knife. Uh, Eli actually recommends training knife if you have one. It could be a wooden spoon. It could be a couple of paint stirrers all taped together. It could even be a bunch of bananas you're really willing and ready to destroy. Eli's words, not mine. So. <laughs> All right, so last period, day one. This is gonna be the end of the day, basically on Halloween. Relentless small sword from another, another one from uh, Loraldo Anzualda. Uh, an exploration of small sword that delves into the pursuit of a singular focus and goal. Participants will explore the tactics, responses, and actions that you can do to achieve the ultimate goal of a character regardless of obstacle. So for this kind of class, you're gonna want something to simulate a small sword. Probably recommend a prop or sword or stick, something roughly between 28 to 34 inches long, uh, and preferably not anything heavier than a pound if you can help it. Um, it can be a piece of PVC pipe. It can be a wooden dowel. It could be a broomstick. It could be a cane. We can get creative in what we, we end up utilizing. Uh, next class during period four, we get our first class from Brandy Laird, our parkour expert from Seattle. Uh, rather than teaching a particular training modality or specific forms, the focus of this class is going to be to understand what it takes to create smooth creature-like movement to assist in character development and performance. Whether portraying an actual beast for motion cap or mocap, or fighting a character who's particularly feral, looking more animalistic just takes some know-how and conditioning. So the main thing you need for this kind of class is just some open space and good movement clothes, clothes you can move in. Um, an optional thing that you can throw in if you have it or if you have access to it is some sort of yoga block or equivalent block. Cool, just um, check so. Oh goodness. Uh, the last class that we are offering in period four is going to be from uh, our one of our local folks, uh, J. Alex Cadero. Uh, he is going to be talking about arming the fight. So this is going to be geared a little bit more towards folks that are, again, hoping to become fight directors, fight choreographers, something on that kind of track. Thinking outside the box and choosing props to arm your show that suit both your production design and budgetary restrictions. It's gonna cover swords, knives, guns, sticks, found objects, stylized violence, and blood effects. This is gonna be a lecture kind of class, so only thing you really need to bring is creativity, bring questions, bring your notebook, all right? So next day, first period, second day, November 1st. Uh, we start the day out with Mr. Kevin McCurdy. Uh, he is going to be teaching a class specifically on knife for all levels. There we go. There's the acronym. So the BT, BRT in uh, the description from period one from the first day, it specifically refers to body response technique. 
So what he loves about this weapon is that when used correctly, you can enable the full movement of your body into a single strike or cut or parry or avoidance. For him, that is super exciting. For me, that's exciting too. Uh, also, this is one of the few weapon systems that totally exploits the 45 degrees to your advantage. He's gonna go into detail about what he means by that in the class. So if you're curious, make sure you sign up for it. Uh, with his BRT or body response technique system, he's formulated over the years. It uh, He's gonna take you through cuts one through eight with a couple of finishing shots and a couple of avoids. You might go, hey, I've done this before, but not like that. So make sure you check it out. Uh, kind of like, uh, Eli's class from the day before where uh, you would need something to simulate a knife. Same idea, training knife, wooden spoons, a couple of paint stirs taped together, just not a real knife, right? I'm watching you all out there. Uh, next up, period one, day two, virtual intimacy 101. Eli's gonna be talking to us about Intimacy. Eli is a uh, certified intimacy instructor with uh, Intimacy Directors International or Intimacy Directors and, and Choreographers. I believe that's the organization at this point now. Uh, so now that nobody else can be in the same room as anybody else, is the need for intimacy direction gone? No. This class will introduce the five pillars of intimacy direction as developed by, int there it is, by intimacy directors and coordinators. Excuse me. And we'll also peek at some ways these concepts can adapt to support intimate work in our weird new world of entirely virtual productions. All right. This is another lecture class. So make sure you bring your notebook, bring your questions, bring your open mind. All right. Uh, the last class for period one, head, shoulders, knees and toes with Alex Cadero. Specific body articulation for efforts of aggression and pain reaction an exploration of physical points of articulation for efforts of aggression and specificity of reaction and characterization and storytelling. Gonna be utilizing both unarmed and single sword for this class. So you will need something to stand in for a single sword, whether it be a single sword itself or a dowel rod or a stick, a PVC pipe, a cane. We can get creative with this folks, all right? So period two. Uh, if you were just joining, make sure you throw in a couple of comments in the uh, comment section. I can definitely answer any questions you got live. And if you missed Damon Stith earlier in our live broadcast, you will be able to go back and check that out once this broadcast gets uploaded to Facebook and YouTube. All right. So for day two, period two, Loraldo's hit him for real, but for pretend. Uh, another class from Loraldo Anzualda. Uh, many times in the observation of fights, whether film, theater, TV, action, YouTube, social media, etc., we see great content, but we also see content that looks uncommitted, telegraphed, and blatantly open. Participants will discuss and explore the ideas of online attacks to a specific target, committed actions, distance, and proximity to combatants, attacks of opportunity, and kinesthetic responses to st stimuli. So honestly, I can't wait for that class. Uh, this is an unarmed class, so all you really need is a good, comfortable movement clothes and some open space. Carrying over from the day before, uh, this is Michelle Jang's last class for our workshop, uh, Jinju Sword and Spear, double sword technique, all right? Using the template of a choreographed fight, this class will focus on basic Jingju double sword techniques. Areas of focus are gonna be on stance, spins, hits, and blocks. Uh, we are gonna hopefully be posting up a demo video that Michelle actually sent us that displays and talks about a little bit about what, uh, what the style that she is trained and an expert in, okay? Uh, the equipment for this class, comfortable clothes that's going to allow movement, some open space, two short swords, or something that is approximately about 39 inches long or one meter if you are from anywhere else other than the United States. Uh, that includes the handle and hilt. Uh, these can be interchanged for any other similar objects broomsticks cut into something something that is roughly the same kind of weight and diameter 
of bamboo if you can get it. All right. So things to look out for. Uh, last period, last class for period two with Jacqueline Holloway. We've got Apocalypse Now. Found weapons, a toaster, an umbrella, your neighbor's cat. Who cares? It's a weapon now. This class will explore the range of storytelling through found weapons. We'll discuss the different categories, safety procedures, and techniques of fighting with anything. So the equipment that you need for this class, pretty much anything you can find around your house. Literally. So make sure you check out that class if that sounds like a lot of fun, all right? Uh, period three for day two. Uh, we got Brandy's next class. Brandy, just as a reminder, is actually out in Seattle. So we are having Brandy uh, closer to the end of the day on either day. Uh, so if you are, uh, your schedule is such that you are only available in the afternoon, then you are going to have a lot of access to Brandy. If your schedule is such that you're more only available in the mornings, my apologies. So with Brandy, Kemi, the art of falling. Brandy is our parkour expert. So I literally cannot wait to see what she's bringing to this class. Whether you're the hero of the story and must hit rock bottom before rising to the top, or you're an energetic extra ready to take a hit and you gotta learn, uh, and you must learn and perfect your ability to fall in order to be convincing while also staying safe. In this workshop, we're gonna review falling techniques, uh, falling concepts, break falling techniques, rolling fall techniques, scrambles, some clever ways to approach practicing these methods to make them as realistic and effective as possible. So the only things you really need for this class are some open space, access to an open surface you feel comfortable falling on. So whether that is a nice, really nice carpeted floor, the grass outside, something to that effect. Uh, you will also need a low structure or an object you might feel comfortable falling or tripping from or over. So like maybe you've got a lip between your kitchen and your and your living room, something like that. Um, and you need a few objects to slip on, such as water bottles or furniture sliders or towels. Brandy will go into a bit more detail uh, actually, this next week, we're hoping to have her on one of these live streams. So we'll be able to get some more information about some of these classes. So once again, earlier in our stream, we actually uh, got a chance to talk to Damon about uh, his double stick class. So definitely go back in the video and check that out. Um, and then last but not least in period three, we have Lean Core Small Sword Practices uh, with our very own Ian Rose. Uh, small sword exercises of Leoncourt, how Leoncourt encouraged his students through vigorous practice to master the sword. This is a chance to refine your small sword point work and footwork based on the his one of the historical giants, all right? Uh, the equipment you'll need for this class, similar to a lot of the other classes that needed either a small sword or single sword, something to effectively be in your hand that is about 28 to 34 inches long if you could find it. Um, not heavier than a pound if you can make it. But if you have a wooden spoon, there you go. As long as you've got something in your hand, okay? And last but not least, period four, we have our last class from Brandy Liard. Realistic firearms handling. This one's an open class, all right? There's nothing that can end the sus uh, suspension of disbelief when watching a film or show other than a performance uh, or another performance, like noticing a character who's clearly supposed to be proficient in something and clearly isn't. In this class, we're gonna uh, explore different approaches to performing scenes with firearms, cover what it looks like uh, to know what you're doing as, as, we, uh, as well as how to appear to be a novice, work on both ends of that knowledge spectrum and, no and experience spectrum. Uh, this will include pistol and rifle grips, stances, basic movement, geometry, such as clearing thresholds, and using cover and concealment. In this class, we are not asking you to use a real firearm. So please do not have a real firearm in your hands. Finger guns, 
things like that. No need to have any real replicas or toys to participate. They do help, but we are asking not to use a real firearm, please. Please be careful out there, okay? Uh, optional could be training weapons uh, such as uh, similar substitutes, such as uh, blue guns, an airsoft gun, Nerf guns, other toys, things like that. Please make sure that if you join this class, choose your practice area where you're going to be taking this class or utilizing this class. Please choose that area with care. We want all of our students to stay safe, especially in the kind of time in this country that we're in, all right? Uh, once again, for Damon's class, if you wanna hear a really in-depth and really awesome uh, uh, explanation about what Damon's classes are, just refer back to the beginning of this live stream. And last but not least, period four, class versus SAS from Oliver Donahue. Gonna be talking about single sword and small sword. They speak the same basic language and we use the same kind of weapon uh, for it by style, but the nuance and flavor each brings a fight that is very specific. So we'll look at both individually and then find out if two great tastes do indeed taste great together. Uh, the equipment you'll need for this kind of class is similar to a lot of the other classes that have needed a single sword or a long sword, or a, sorry, single sword or small sword, something like a PVC pipe or a dowel or a cane or something like that. All righty. So let's get back to this stream. Cool. So awesome. So that is pretty much what our schedule is going to be for this year. And I cannot wait to see y'all. So make sure you jump on our website, check out these classes, read a bit more about what these classes are gonna offer, and then register so that you can sign up for these classes. The sooner you register, the sooner you can get into the class you want and guarantee your spot in that class. All right. Uh, some of the things that I didn't talk about in the schedule are some of the extras. We're hoping to have both lunches, both days, one vendor each day at least, if not both. We're, we're kind of playing around with some ideas. So Damon is actually going to be uh, vending and selling some of his stuff during the course of the weekend. Uh, we'll have a, a vendor spot for him. Uh, we also have Rogue Seal and Neil Massey coming out to join us, and Jesse Belsky. So the way we're gonna work uh, vendors is we're actually gonna have a couple of our Zoom rooms open during lunch, and if possible, at the end of the day on that Saturday during a kind of uh, virtual gathering that we're gonna have. Speaking of that Saturday night, we're playing with some ideas on how to up the ante with our virtual gathering. We're taking a look at some options with uh, Discord screen sharing because you know what? The Mandalorian is gonna be live that weekend. So hopefully we can have a watch party for that. For those who have uh, Disney Plus, we can get together and do a couple of uh, Disney watch parties maybe. We're still playing with some ideas. Uh, but there's also stuff like uh, Hocus Pocus or um, Netflix watch parties. So we're, we're playing with some ideas. We're finding find ways to make sure that we can gather. We can have some fun together because that's the biggest part of what this is. Um, the next day, at the end of the classes on Sunday, we will also have a uh, hour-long webinar question and answer session with all of our instructors. So if you have questions that you wanna pick the brains and get some information from people who have been in this business and studying all of these different styles for years, for decades in some cases, make sure you tune in to the webinar on that day. All of these are gonna be available for folks that register. If you go to our website, you can actually find out some more information about our costs. Um, we do have our pay it forward scholarship fund that anyone who is feeling a little bit more strong financially, if you feel like you're in a good place to do it, you can donate a couple extra bucks towards the pay it forward scholarship, which will go towards uh, being able to admit somebody on the wait list. And those that are on the wait list, those are folks that, hey, 
we're all in a tough spot right now. So there are some folks that are putting their name down on that list. And if you can donate to that pay it forward scholarship, that helps get someone else in that helps make sure that someone else is, has access to that training. So we easiest way for us to get together, get through all of this craziness in the world right now is together. So let's make sure we stick there. All right. So that is pretty much it for our going through the schedule. If you just joined us, make sure you go back and once this live stream is uh, officially on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, uh, you can go to uh, uh, either one of those and check out the full stream. We just went through the entire schedule, class by class, period by period, and we even had an awesome um, guest guest appearance by one of our guest instructors, uh, Damon Stiff, the president of the Historical African Martial Arts Association. Uh, so we, if you look in the comment stream down here, we actually put in uh, his, if you go to this Facebook page, that's actually demands uh, the armory that he makes weapons at. They are freaking gorgeous, by the way, wood, uh, polymer plastic, steel, some of his stuff is in bronze. So he's got some awesome stuff. You can also go to this website, silentsword.org, to check out some of what he is able to offer. So if you're curious about some of Damon's uh, work and you want to be able to get something to get ready for the cheesesteak, check out his website. A couple other websites to check out is we have a merch page. Philadelphia Stage Combat Workshop merchandise. You can get different images that have been on previous year's uh, t-shirts. You can get it on t-shirts, hats, hats, uh, different kinds of baby outfits, pillowcases. We got lots of stuff on there. So if you want to grab a piece of the cheesesteak from years past or from this year, I believe there's uh, last year's 20th anniversary uh, design. Uh, make sure you check out this merch page. Uh, I will actually put that into comment section, as well as make sure you check out our website to get more information on how to register and where to go from there. So thank you all so much for uh, jumping on our live stream. And if you're catching this uh, at a later date or at a later time, hope you have a great night. For those who joined us live, thank you so much for joining in this uh, live stream. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a couple more live streams next week. We're gonna be talking with, I believe on Wednesday morning, we will be talking live with uh, Ian Rose and John Belomo, who are two of the folks that have made sure that this workshop lasted as long as it did, or as long as it has, keywords. Um, we'll also be talking with uh, Brandy Laird, one of our other guest instructors, as well as Jacqueline Holloway. Uh, we're clarifying some uh, dates and times in that case. Uh, we've got, we're, we're going to have some really fun uh, live streams next week. So make sure you tune in to uh, this page. If you've tuned into this live stream or if you're watching it later, make sure you share it. Share it so more people can know what the classes are. So awesome. Have a great night, y'all. Thank you so much for uh, taking a little time to listen to me ramble. Mm -hmm.